from reading your story, I think you said that the artist, the late artist, formerly known as Prince, yeah, gave you some advice, and you had just moved to Hollywood, I guess, and or yeah. LA. So um, I actually love telling this story. So um, I moved to Los Angeles before I got accepted to film school, and um, I just figured if I don't get into USC or UCLA or AFI, I'll you know go assistant director or get a job at a production company over the studio. So. I, um, the second day I was in LA, I got an internship with a company called Propaganda Films. And on my second day of the job, um, a casting director says, hey, um, what's your name? And I said, Alex. She said, oh, her name is Lisa Fields. And she said, um, would you like to be a stand-in for a famous rock star? I'm like, well, who is it? And she said, well, I can't tell you. I said, nah, I don't want to be a stand-in because I want to be behind the camera. So I went back to my boss, Stephen Price, and I said, hey, um, Lisa Fields wants me to be a stand-in for a rock star. She won't tell me who it is, and I don't want to do it. And he said, why? I said, because I want to be a director. I don't want to be in front of the camera. I want to be behind the camera. He said, you have to do it. You've never been on a professional film set. So I raced back, and she was on the phone ready to hire somebody. I said, I'll do it, I'll do it. She said, okay. So the next day, I'm on the set, and the DP says, okay, Alex, you can leave now. And I turn around, and I'm face to face with Prince. And I'm like, I really wasn't a big Prince fan at that time, but I was looking down at him, and our noses were like this far apart. I'm like, wow, you got four inch heels on, and I'm taller than you. And he just laughed, and he goes, can we uh, switch places? And I said, sure. So um, anyway, we were told not to talk to Prince. They said, do not talk to him, but he would talk to me. And on day six, I got my letter of acceptance from USC. And um, my roommate got the letter and she said, I have something really important to give you. I said, okay, well, I'm in downtown LA and I'm on this music video shoot. Can you bring it? So she gave me the letter, I opened it up and I went into the set And I said, I was really excited. I said, I got into USC film school. And everyone started clapping. And Prince said, (laughs) I'm like, what? (laughs) He goes, come here. I'm like, well, what did I do? So he said, "Um, so you're going to be a filmmaker? I said, yes. He said, let me hear you say that. I said, say what? He said, let me hear you say you're going to be a filmmaker. And I said, I'm going to be a filmmaker. And he said, I want you to listen closely. There are four rules I want you to consider abiding by if you are going to pursue filmmaking in this town. I said, okay. So he said, first one, always, he pointed up, always remember God, the creator. Always remember God and your creator. Number two, always remember where you come from because when you forget where you come from, you die as an artist. And then number three was um, break the rules. If you follow the rules, you're going to be boring and you're going to fade fast. And number four was always give back. You must give back as an artist. And I said, okay. And he said, repeat, repeat what I said. And I did. I call these my four purple cornerstones. Remember God, where you come from. Um, never forget uh, where you come from. I'm sorry. Let me start over. I will always remember the four, I call them my four purple cornerstones. Remember God and the Creator. Never forget where you come from. Break the rules and always, always give back. And he said, grace is really important in your journey. So after he tested me on the four, you know, core principles he told me, he told Rosie Gaines, his backup singer, he said, Rosie, pray for this brother that he does not go down the dark path. He needs to stay on the path of light. So Rosie Gaines took my hands, placed them on Prince's piano, and pray, made a prayer of protection that I wouldn't be seduced by the dark side, you know, or the, what Prince called the fleshly temptations. And she said, this is serious. We are praying for you. And after she prayed, Prince said, amen. Wow. And he said, don't forget what I told you. I said, I, I won't. So imagine that is a priceless encounter that cannot be measured. I just moved to LA 
I just I finished my undergraduate work at Santa Barbara. For him to take the time to tell me these things and share with me his four core principles and for him to ask his backup singer Rosie Gaines to pray for me. I never forget this. And one of the reasons why when I decided to move forward with making FYI films a nonprofit, I rummaged through my mind. I remember Prince saying, always give back. And he helped me. I don't think I'd be talking about FYI films if Prince didn't tell me this about giving back. Because it seems like all four things you've incorporated, the purple cornerstones. It sounds I, like that's all. I right. tried to. And then the second part of the story is, so when Prince died, right, they did a tribute concert for him. And uh, I called the organizers and I said, hi, um, my name is Alex Munoz. And Prince gave me some really good advice back in the day. I, I will do anything. I will sweep the streets. I will sell popcorn. I will sell hot dogs. I will be an usher. I'll do security. I just want to in my own way, pay tribute to this great artist because he helped, he gave me some advice that I'll never, ever forget. So they said, we'll call you right back. And what happened was two hours later, they called back and they said, we Googled you and you're a filmmaker. Why don't you do a film celebrating Prince? And I said, well, the concert's 10 days away. I can't possibly make a good enough film. And I said, how about if I document it? So I went to document this Prince tribute concert. And um, the very first interview I did is is happened to be in the same exact spot when Prince told me the four purple cornerstones. It was like, oh my God, this is where Prince told me to remember God, remember where you come from, break the rules and always give back. And I felt really inspired. Like my body was like trembling because I was, you could feel his presence in that area. It was the concert where it's right in front of LA City Hall, which is where they shot the video. How uncanny is that? Then um, I went out to the audience and interviewed some people about the concert and Stevie Wonder does this amazing rendition of Purple Rain. So I'm trying to get backstage to interview Stevie and I can't get to him. And the guards are saying, you can't talk to Stevie. He doesn't want to be bothered. So one of my FY film alumni from Hawaii, Adrian Kelly sees me and says, hey, um, Alex, what are you doing here? And I said, oh, I think I told you when I taught FY Films, that when I taught the film workshop, that my first experience on a film set was being Princess Diana. He said, yeah, yeah, but what are you doing here? I said, I'm doing a documentary. He said, well, why do you look mad? I said, because Stevie gave the best performance and I want to interview him and they won't let me get backstage. And he said, oh, I could help you. And I said, Adrian, that's really nice of you, but you can't help me. He said, Alex, I could help you. He goes in the back, comes back and he says, come on, takes me to Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder's nephew. Oh, wow. So wow. I felt like it was full circle. So, I mean, I got like chicken skin right now because Prince tells me the importance of giving back. I'm there to do a documentary about this concert. I can't get to Stevie. Turns out one of my alumni never told me he was Stevie Wonder's nephew. Wow. Gets me backstage because I believe I had access to Stevie and all of Prince's backup singers and all of Prince's backup dancers. Because if I didn't teach that FYI film workshop in Hawaii, I would have met Adrian. And then two years later, I see Adrian at this concert and he gets me backstage. That's karma. That is, oh, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I told Adrian, I said, why didn't you ever tell me you were Stevie Wonder's nephew? He said, I don't know, you know, Munoz, I don't want people, my family, we don't want people to like us just because we're related to Stevie. So we just, but, but you earned it because you've come to our birthday parties and our 4th of July parties and you never asked any questions and you showed us love anyway. So, okay, now you know. So, I mean, what a, what a blessing, right? That oh my gosh, one of my story. alumni is Stevie Wonder's nephew and little did I know that two and a half years later, I would need him to complete my doc. Right, and you're in the same spot where yeah. you first met Prince. So yes. it was a music video back yes. in the day yes. in front of LA City Hall? Yeah. Wow. So my, my doc is called um, Purple Dots, and it's short. It's just about how I moved to LA and Prince gave me this advice, and then how, um, you know, 18 years later, I'm doing this documentary at, at his tribute concert, and how my first interview was in the same spot where I met him, and how turns out one of my alumni is Stevie Wonder's nephew, and then I can do get the interviews I need. 
That's its own movie. Yeah. That's the second part of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I have a feeling like a lot of stuff like that happens to you, though. Is that true? That you just have like these amazing synchronicities or maybe I'm, I'm wrong. I don't know. I just feel like you have a lot of that that happens to you. Yeah, I think I, um, I, people, I often share this stuff with people where I put it on my blog and people say, why does all this magical stuff happen to you? I don't think anything, I don't think I see or, or witness magic more than anybody else, but I do pay attention. And um, I think I have a, a, a heightened sense of awareness because where I grew up, I had to really be aware of what was going on, who was going to act out, who was going to become angry, who was going to go hostile. And because of that, I'm, I really pay attention. Also, writers and directors have to have super sharp observational skills. So I just, I pay attention, but I don't think I'm anyone special or I don't have the creator's favor. It's just that I, I do pay attention. And they always say with intuition, like we all have it. I think some people have it more developed, even though right. we all have that ability. It just right, just from being super aware, hyper aware of surroundings and someone's mood, or what you know, what will somebody be a danger or whatever. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's. But I, I don't even do, know how. I to never would have imagined that one of my alumni would help me make a better documentary film. And I was, I met him because I was giving back because Prince told me, asked, asked me to. Prince challenged me to give back and I did. And as a result, I have a better doc about him. Right, and then that person, it, it came full circle. Yeah. That's a powerful story. Yeah. Wow.